Um, Congolo is currently number one in the Icelandic music charts. Yes. Um, is this the first time you've been number one in Iceland? Yes. Uh, my last single, or I, uh, we got to number one with my, my band, Tesco. Yeah. And then um, my last single, Stop, went to number five, and then Congolo went to number one. I mean, is number one a bi- uh, being number one a big deal in Iceland? Of course, it's always a big deal being number one, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least I was very proud of it, and I think, uh, yeah, in, an, in any country, it's, it's an honour when your song is number one. So you've, you've got to number one in the Iceland, but how, what's your plan to dominate the UK charts? Yeah, uh, any tips? I mean, if, if, you, if you've got some inside information, please, yes. Uh, just promote yourself as much as possible and just be everywhere. Okay, be uh, everywhere. Yeah, and that's pretty much what you're doing anyway, so... Promote myself as much as possible and be everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I need to work on the whole being everywhere thing. Yeah. But uh, my plan is to, uh, when, I've, when I've been to Iceland and finished mixing, mixing the album, I'm going to come back here, hopefully with a band, to play some lovely gigs, show them uh, that my music is nice and um, I'm not so bad myself, and then hopefully we'll take off from there. Yeah, I think that will work. Yeah. <laughs> now, it wasn't your birthday too long ago. Yeah, no, it was in May. May, yeah, but I forgot to get you a present. <laughs> um, I hope you can forgive me. Uh, but you actually got something really wicked anyway. Um, the Travel and Leisure magazine, Liffa Erickson, printed a special cover. I know. There were loads of balloons and stuff. I was in the street. Very 50s. I mean, yeah, I mean, tell me about that. How did they know it was your birthday anyway? Um, actually, the funny thing is they didn't know it was my birthday. They wanted to put me on their cover, and then um, <laughs> and then I got there to the photo shoot, and in the studio there was loads of balloons, and I said to the photo- photographer, it's my birthday, and she goes, no, so it was just a summery <laughs> theme, but then we decided uh, to use all the balloons and everything for the cover, because it happened to be on my birthday. Wow, what a coincidence. I know, it was brilliant, but I had I did a barn dance for my birthday. I mean, and was that the best present you received, or...? Oh, no, I got loads of lovely presents. My my uh, mum and dad, my dad, he has this kind of, uh, like a garage where all his trucks are, because he's a truck driver. And he took all his trucks and take us out of the garage. And then him and my brother went to the countryside and got lots of hay bales from this farmer. And then we had the barn dance in my dad's workshop, where uh, all my friends came in their cowboy outfits, and we got the Icelandic line dancing champion to teach us all dance routines. So I have to say that was my best present. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think I've ever got that on my birthday before. No, it was quite cool. Uh, Mum and Dad, they kind of just, yeah, moved all the diggers and trucks out, and then they found this only farmer that was still doing old-fashioned hay bales, and my dad and all his friends kind of were dressed up in, in what do you call it, dungarees, and, and kind of uh, looking like looking like farmers uh, making hamburgers and marshmallows for everybody. <laughs> it was brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you talk about uh, barn dancing. I mean, you, rec- you, rec- you record your latest album in a barn. I know, I like barns. What can I say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you recorded it in S- Snowy Scarborough in yeah. January. Yeah, it was freezing. Yeah, I'm sure it was. It was it was absolutely freezing, but it, it did have that kind of glittery, snowy ground, and it just felt it felt like home. It felt very, very Icelandic, and, and you kind of had a row of chickens following you from the live room to the control room, and we're just all staying there in this farmhouse for like a week. It was just, it just had a lovely atmosphere about it. How friendly were the chickens then? They were very friendly, especially when they realised that I was the one that was going to feed them. You know, they were eating gourmet food because they were eating leftovers for a whole week. So we were looking like very, very fat chickens by the end of my album recording. <laughs> I mean, your parents were there as well, weren't they? Yeah, they came to cook for everybody. They like coming to cook for people and they just thought... You know, they wanted to support me and make it feel like home. So they flew from Iceland and then uh, cooked uh, meals for the whole band uh, the whole time we were there. It was oh, that's nice. lovely. I mean, your music career really began with Gus Gus, yes. obviously, um, when you used to see him record and go around the world with them. Yeah. From, from 1995 to 1999. Yeah. Um, ever since the age of 15. Oh. Yeah, from 15 to 19. Wow, I mean, it must have been an overwhelming experience for you to, you know, perform at such a young age. Yeah, um... It was a cool experience for, for you know, we started, I, I joined the band when I was 15, and, but I started touring when I was 16, because I was a little bit too young at 15, I would say. Um, and then uh, I, I made a deal with my, made a deal with my mum and dad, you know, that I'd always have someone very grown up looking after me, and I wouldn't, wouldn't be partying or anything, just playing the music, so they let me go. 
and travel the world and it was brilliant you know it just kind of let me get to know know the news business and decide if this is what I wanted to do when I grew up. Wow were your friends of the same age quite jealous of you? Um, I think not really jealous they were supportive but I think they found it quite strange that I was uh, kind of I could show off to school when I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean did you have any uh, creative control over the music? Um, I mean, we all did work on work on the music together. It was all all very much work, you know, as a collective. Yeah. It was nine of us, so there is only so much control you can have oh, when wow. nine people are voting on everything. Wow, that well, must be hard to control. <laughs> it's much easier being on your own. If you want a band your solo, you just put in a band your solo. But one of the things I I realized from being in Guskus is that I did not want to be in a band with nine people. No, no. Because nine people, uh, kind of that have the same creative control and the same input on everything. It's just too complicated. Surely there must be a lot of arguments. Mm, arguments, disagreements, whatever you want to call them, but it's just too complicated. I mean, are you still in contact with um, Emiliano Torini, who is also part of Gus Gus? Uh, no, I kind of I see, I, I kind of follow what he's doing, and ru I've run into her in the airport a couple of times, because we, we both travel a lot. But um, I think she's, you know, doing really well, and I like, like where she's gone with her career. Uh, is it just small talk then, or d do you know her quite well? Is it just small talk? Small talk, no. yeah. Uh, no, um, I did. We did go to the same school, and then we were in the same kind of first band for a little bit. Uh, but right now, or at this point, we kind of haven't been in contact for a long time. So it's just kind of, how are you? And you know, I like like what you did on that gig or that song. Yeah, <laughs> Actually, I'm not surprised you went to the same school. Everyone in Iceland seems to know each other. Seems that way. Okay, tell me about your activities away from music. Uh, you've acted in some commercials. Yeah. Um, one was for a viral campaign for Riker Vodka. Yeah. Um, which is really funny. And it's with you standing in front of a drawing of yeah. an Icelandic landscape with a very straight face, um, talking about how proud Icelanders are about their vodka. Yeah. I mean, tell me about the making of that. Um, it was all obviously you're just standing in front of a green screen in yeah. boiling light in Iceland it's a traditional woolly jumper yeah. uh, and I mean I think I did quite well keeping a straight face while imagining there was a puffin huffing my leg I think, no, I think it's unusual because you're usually not, not, not usually in a happy mood and then watch that and you're really straight faced it's like wow <laughs> Uh, no, but that's what the director wanted, so that's what you give him. I've done, I've done films and TV work in Iceland as well, so I think, I mean, like with any acting, it's not really you. No. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't shown on TV, was it? No, it was a viral thing. Oh, right. Um, you also in another advert uh, from Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. Um, which you've seen a cover of Sam Brown's Stop. Yeah, that, that was the reason why I recorded Stop as a single, because... People started contacting me after after uh, after the advert started playing, asking where they could buy the song. So I thought, mm, I actually might release my own version of it. Oh, really? It was that way around then? Yeah. Oh, right. I, I hadn't recorded it. They uh, Actually, the director saw my elf-watching video <laughs> and my Tomoko video and thought, I want this girl. So uh, he kind of, he was looking for me and I was in the Lake District, in like a little cottage, writing my next album, and then I found these messages that some German guy was looking for me, and then that happened to be the director, because he was on the internet and saw me there and wanted me to put this out. But it was cool, because two weeks later I was in, in Madrid driving a, a Mercedes. Wow. <laughs> do, do you own a Mercedes yourself? Or? No. <laughs> um, you talk about that was, that was a cover, obviously a cover, but you also covered Madonna's Papa Don't Preach. No. Didn't oh, you didn't know? I covered Material Girl. A oh, Material Girl. I don't know about Madonna Material very well then. Um, mm -hmm. At the big cheer in 2007. Yeah. But you also, uh, but your biggest idol is really Dolly Parton. Yeah. Um, how big of a fan are you of her? Um, I would love to go to Dollywood, you know. And yeah. And play, a play a gig with Dolly, or a little bit of a duet. So I'm just hoping that one day that she hears about me and, and offers me to come over when Kenny Rogers can't make it and we can do a bit of violence in the street. <laughs> that would be a good moment. Your life would be complete, wouldn't it, if that happened? Well, that would be a pretty big moment. But thankfully, thankfully, I think uh, I think my life could be complete uh, without moments like that. I think they are more like icing on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you covered any of her songs on tour? I actually, I haven't. Um, I wanted to do Jolene for my album, but right before I 
I started recording the album. There have been so many people covering Jolene that I thought, oh, actually, I'm not going to do that now. Well, it's but too I obvious, def- yeah. Yeah, but I definitely will cover a Dolly song at some point. Hmm. I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> um, finally, when can I get hold of your new album then? Is it in the autumn? Uh, it will be out in Iceland in the autumn, September, October. And hopefully it will be out for the rest of the world around the same time. But normally it takes a little bit longer when it's uh, when it's for other countries. So realistically we're probably thinking right after Christmas. And can you give me any hints about what the other songs might be about? Yeah, we've got a song called Vampire, about how the neighbours in uh, the street where I live with my boyfriend think that we're vampires because we write music in the night and sleep into the day because they get up at seven and start uh, cleaning their cars and, and mowing the lawn. So I wrote a song called Vampires about how they think we're vampires. And then there's a bit of a message for Dolly in one of them, uh, a song called Homemade Lemonade. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's mixed, but it's a happy album. It's got a very happy, happy sound to it. Wow. They're quite good subjects to talk about, actually. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, thanks for talking to me, Have This. Thank you. Um, continue to have lots of fun on the road. I'm sure you will anyway. Yeah. Um, and I hope your tour and new album are successful. Um, I'll try to come to see you at one of your live performances sometime Yeah, it would be lovely you know. to see you. Come and say hi. Yeah, and I'll keep following your blog uh, <laughs> <Okay>. every day. <laughs> um, speak to you soon. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.